All right, so we're going to talk about Neapolitan courts. Um, very often they're put and discussed together uh, like mode mixture, but they, they definitely belong in a different category. So the Neapolitan court is, if you're going to give it a Roman numeral, it would be a flat two court. So the flat means that whatever your scale degree two is in the key signature, it's a half step below that. So let's just say, for example, we were in the key of E minor. Your normal scale degree two would be this F sharp, because of our key signature. So the flat means it becomes an F natural. The fact that it's an uppercase Roman numeral means that it is a major triad. So F, A, C, you can see that would, be a, that would be a major triad. So if you see an F major triad in the key of E minor, you would label it flat 2 as a Roman numeral. Because it's so commonly heard as, a, as, a, as almost kind of like a, 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 key, a, a chord outside of the key, sometimes it's just called N short for Neapolitan. Uh, and the, ne the word Neapolitan became popularly used based on composers in the 18th century, opera composers in Naples, Italy, and they used this chord a lot, this flat two chord. So that's, that's how we're going to label it, and that's what it is. Now, it is more common in minor keys than it is in major keys. Let's, let's figure out why. Let's say instead we were in E major. Not E minor, but E major. Flat 2 means scale degree 2 is our F sharp. The flat means it's down a half step, so we put our natural sign. And then we make a major triad. A but when I put this C, diatonically it would be a C sharp. So I have to put a natural. So why is it more commonly heard, the Neapolitan chord, in minor as opposed to major? Well, because there's, it's more normal. It, there's, there's less notes that have to be changed in minor. In minor, the only thing we have to do is modify scale degree 2. In a major key, we have to also modify scale degree 6. So it's, it, it's more distant to a major key than to a minor key. Because of that, uh, as soon as the farther you get away from the expected, the more carefully you have to treat it. You don't have to be quite as careful, you're going to be able to use it a lot more. So again, Neapolitan chords do occur in both major and minor keys but they're going to be more common in minor because they're closer or related to the diatonic scale. They're often found in first inversion. That's by far the most common inversion. Um, and when you do find it, you're doubling the third, which is, which is the same thing as saying the base. So let me, let me simplify that. Because for Neapolitan chords, you should double the base. So, I'm going to erase that. So, Neapolitan chords can be found in root position. The rule remains the same double the base. Uh, sometimes you look at, at different textbooks and they'll, they'll give you different rules. So, they'll say double the third when it's a first inversion and double the base when it's a root. Whereas you can just say double the base, and it covers all those things. So that's the simplest rule to remember, uh, and it's what I should have written off the, off the bat. So first inversion, the most common, any Neapolitan chord, you're going to be doubling the base. Second inversion is very uncommon, so uncommon that we're not going to even consider it for right now. Um, first inversion most, root position, in both cases, double the base. Now, where does this occur in a harmonic progression? Well, typically, the Neapolitan chord 
leads you to a dominant function. It's how you approach the dominant. So these big squares I have here, these are like our, our you're going to start here, you're going to end here. So typically before the Neapolitan chord you'll start with a one chord because one can go anywhere or a four chord or a two diminished six. Again I'm doing this in minor since that's the most common. And this is going to take us to our Neapolitan chord, which kind of gets inserted in between this and our dominant function. 1, 6, 4, as we know, is really a dominant function, this cadential 6, 4. So knowing that, you can see that a, a traditional progression that might be something like uh, 1, let's do it in minor, 1, 6, Two diminished six, five, one. Let's say that's a, our typical progression, right? If I want to insert the Neapolitan chord, it comes between the two chord and the five chord. This could also have been a four chord. It could have been a one chord. We could have just skipped from these two chords and gone straight to the Neapolitan six. So let's look and see what that would actually make. Let's take our key of E minor. That would mean a E minor triad going to a C major triad to a F sharp diminished triad with A in the bass. Our Neapolitan six is an F major triad with A in the bass to a B major triad to E minor triad. So that would be our lead sheet symbols for that chord progression. You can see how our bass would go. Let's hear what that sounds like. So you can hear how, how interesting that Neapolitan sound is. So. which is our scale degree flat 2, typically resolves down. So this F natural, you could say, well, look, it could go right up to a, the, the F sharp in the B chord, but that's not the way it resolves. So you have to be careful with this. That flat 2 scale degree resolves down. So if I was going to write an F here for my, my uh, Neapolitan 6 chord, when I go to the B major triad, the 5 chord, it's going to go to the D sharp. So F natural to D sharp. Now if you say, well, what interval is that? Dr. Dr. B, D sharp to F natural, that's a diminished third. And typically we've said, I've said, avoid augmented and diminished augmented leaps. Well, here's an exception. That's exactly what we have uh, when we, we resolve the Neapolitan six chords. They have that diminished third melodic leap right there um, going, going to the five chord. So let's look at some of these other possibilities that I put here. So these things in parentheses are other chords that can get inserted into your traditional progression. And that's pretty much what we've been doing since we talked about the kind of traditional diatonic harmonic progressions. Anytime we're adding more chords, we're inserting them into that harmonic progression. So when we had secondary functions, we inserted them into a progression at the exactly right spot, right before whatever that secondary function, function was tonicizing. The Neapolitan six chord is an insertion between either tonic or a predominant function and dominant. But there's even further levels of inserting and elongating the progression. You can have a secondary function of Neapolitan. So if we take this example that we had over here, 
F major is our Neapolitan chord in the key of E minor, what would 5 of Neapolitan be? Well, 5 of Neapolitan would be a C major triad, which is our 6th chord. So we can't just do that, right? Because it's going to be, well, why would we hear that as a 5 of Neapolitan? We would just hear that as 6. So what if we did 5-7 of Neapolitan? 5-7 of Neapolitan. That would be a C7 chord. So now, let's take our same progression of 1, 6, 2 diminished 6. Let's go 5, 7 of Neapolitan to Neapolitan 6, 5, 1. Now, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. And actually, here's where our inversions, because smooth voice leading, as I've said over and over, let's do a couple options. The smoothest voice leading that I would, I, would actually want to do. I'm just going to jump straight to what I want to do. Make it a 5 4 2. So it would be C7 over B flat. So we get A, B flat, back to the A, then to a B natural. We get this chromatic bass movement. Very smooth, but a little bit uh, unusual in that respect. So here we go 1, 6, 2 diminished 6. and turns, right? You're expecting things to go one way and they go another way, but that works. Uh, it, it, and you can, you can swap out different chords to kind of get the exact flavor of the kind of twists and turns that you want. But that would be a way that I'm putting in a 5, or 5-7 five, in this case, of Neapolitan. So that secondary dominant concept can be applied to the Neapolitan chord as well. Speaking of secondary functions, this 7 diminished 7 of 5 gets inserted after the Neapolitan. So let's see what that would be. So if we said, okay, after that we want 7 diminished 7 of 5, that would be an A sharp diminished 7. So this will be like really funny, and, I, and I'm not saying that this would be a a, uh, a good progression here. We're just looking at all the different possibilities right now. So this would be five, uh, sorry, seven diminished seven of five going in right here. This is going in right here because we're going to be going back and forth chromatically in the bass and. Too often is going to sound funny, but let's just hear what it sounds like, just so we know. So, again, I, I probably wouldn't do all of these, but I would pick and choose and see all the different options, which is why I wrote it like this, saying that you're going to start here in this box. You're going to start with 1, 4, or 2 diminished 6. If you're going to put in, insert that Neapolitan, that's going to happen, and then you're going to either go to 1, 6, 4, or 5. If you want to make things even, even more spicing and spicy or different, you can put in the secondary function of Neapolitan or the 7 diminished 7 of 5. So you have a whole bunch of options, and what's so exciting is we've all heard one four five one as a harmonic progression. It's it's a great foundation. It works. There's so many great songs that have that. But at the end of the day, wouldn't it be great to have other flavors of harmony where you're not just doing that, where you're extending that expectation? We still have. 5-1 as a core harmonic motion. But let's, let's see how many different ways we can delay that expectation, prolong the anticipation, 
Uh, just like when you wait for a really good meal, it tends to taste better, partially because of the waiting. This can be true of, you know, that meal is resolution to the one chord, and the way we eventually get there builds so much anticipation that that, that resolution can be so satisfying. Another thing that we need to discuss is that modulation, using borrowed chords, so our mode mixture chords, and the evolving chords is actually quite common. And we, they'll use these borrowed chords or Neapolitan chords as common chords. And what it does is it allows composers to modulate smoothly to distantly related or foreign keys. So, let's take some examples here. Let's say we're in the key of, we'll stick in our, our key of E minor. If we wanted to use a common chord, we would look and say, well, what, what chord belongs in both keys? But now that we can have this new labeling of mode mixture chords, borrowed chords, and Neapolitan chords, it opens up a whole bunch of possibilities. So in E minor, our one chord is an E minor triad, and we have F sharp diminished. Um, we then have a G major, A minor, B major, C major, D sharp diminished. These would be our, our normal diatonic triads in minor. The Neapolitan will be a F major triad. As soon as I do that, this allows me to go to any other key that has F major in it. So, what, what can that do for me? Any, any key that has an F major triad, so that would be the key of F major. Um, it would be the key of um, uh, E, uh, sorry, um, so if we kind of like look at all our permutations. So in the key of F major, do we have F major? Sure. How about in the key of F sharp? No, right? So we wouldn't have it there. We wouldn't have it in the key of G. We wouldn't have it in the key of A flat. We wouldn't have it in the key of A. We would have it in the key of B flat, right? We wouldn't have it in the key of B. We would have it in the key of C. Uh, we wouldn't have it in the key of C sharp. We wouldn't have it in the key of D. We wouldn't have it in the key of E flat. We wouldn't have it in the key of E. So we can see that, right? The key of B flat in particular is so distantly related to the key of E minor. One sharp versus two flats. Uh, that's pretty distant. And F majors is pretty distantly related as well. So you could simply say something like, you're going along in the key of E minor, you analyze one, four, five, uh, one, Neapolitan. That becomes your common chord. It becomes your uh, five chord. And then you go one, six, four. Uh, let you go back to one, six, four. Then you go to one, and then let's say you continue with two, six, one, six, four, five, one. Uh, and let me write it like this, one, six, four, one, six, four, five, one. Let's just hear what that would sound like. I'm in my key of E minor, right? Like 
so. So that is exactly how I would modulate using this N6 as, as my common core. And, and again, that get, allows you to get into distant foreign keys. The same is true for mode mixture chord. So let's look at our, our uh, how, that, how that might happen for an example of, of a borrowed chord. Um, minor is usually not what you borrow, but borrow into. It's usually major, but sometimes you'll have that pickerty third, you get something like an E major triad. So what if you were doing something like that and you had in E minor your one, four, five, major one, that becomes your borrowed chord and let's say you want that to put you to, so we're in E minor, you say, well, what, what chords have E majors in it? So um, if I wanted to go to another minor key, that would be the three chord, the five chord, or the six chord. So E major would be three in C sharp minor. It would be, uh, if I want it to be the 5 chord, E would be a 5 in A minor. And it would be the 6 chord in G sharp minor. So G sharp minor is pretty distantly related. So let's do that. So let's say that this becomes 6 in G sharp minor. And then I simply say, okay, 6, 2 diminished 6, 1, 6, 4, 5, 1 in G sharp minor. So here, this is, a, is a, an example of a borrowed chord, borrowed from the parallel major. Let's hear what it sounds like. Start off in E minor again. So now you can see that the Neapolitan chord allows you to it kind of give a, like, a nice movement into the dominant chord. It allows you to, to, to come up with another colorful option that precedes the dominant. And that both the Neapolitan chord and any of the mode mixture chords that we talked about can be used as common chords to help you modulate to distant keys.